Hey there, I'm Scott, and this is Tangents. Um, first, I had two of these in the can for the last two weeks. One of them was super low energy, and uh, the second one was called Beta, which talked about the first one. I meant to put both out, and I only got one. I don't know which one. And I haven't had time to go through and figure that out. So my intention is at some point to go through, figure out which one I'm missing, put the other one up. Uh, hopefully the one that was not super low energy is out because, you know, I'm not trying to be like, you know, kind of um, the horrible talk radio guy. Um, but I don't want to be, you know, just droopy and slow and, you know, I don't want that. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to cause you pain. And if I only got one of the two out, I'm just hoping it was the, the one that wasn't so awful. Uh, so it's, it's Friday again. I'm recording this. Um, strictly speaking, I probably shouldn't be doing this right now because I have a bunch of other shit to do. Uh, but I got a little frustrated. I'm a little tired. I'm a little, a little irritated. I don't know if it comes across. I do think um, my affect is such that how I feel day to day doesn't necessarily project out. People who know me well can kind of read it, but uh, to the casual observer, I think I'm always kind of super level and calm and all this, uh, unless I get a little annoyed. And today, a little fucking annoyed. A uh, variety of things, some I'm not going to talk about. The ones that I will mention are just... Um, I've talked about this before many times, but I have this 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now granted, I do have a beta operating system on it. So you now to some extent there's a complication there, although I don't think that is much of a factor here because this has been a consistent problem with it since I got the logic board replaced twice and got it actually working. But it's constantly running fucking hot. The fan is constantly on and it's very, like, I don't know what it is, but it's also kind of slow. Like, the there's a noticeable lag, like I'm typing something. And, you know, there's a pretty significant lag between when I type something and what happens. Uh, which should not be happening in essentially a top-of-the-line, like, year-and-a-half, two-year-old computer. And it's been happening since I had it. Um, I think that probably what's happening is because it's, you know this overpowered um, V8 of an Intel chip and the tiny little body of like a Mini Cooper is not working well. Uh, it doesn't, it just does not have the thermal dissipation power to be able to cool itself off and it fucks everything up uh, in addition to other things. But that's been driving me nuts. And it's like, I'm sitting there working by it and I'm doing things that are frustrating and slow and tedious and it's just like, I have a finite amount of tolerance for irritation and it's all getting used up on shit that is just like, um, stupid, just fucking pointless and stupid. I mean, I've talked about this a lot, but almost everything that I do is either impossible or that it's trivial. And it does go from being, you know, you chip away at it a while and then it goes from being impossible to being trivial which is kind of annoying because once it's trivial, you're like, why did I spend so much fucking time to do something that was completely trivial? But it's, you know, it's just the standard thing for, and I think it's common in engineering, but it's annoying. It's really annoying. Um, and then you get the Apple thing, and I've been trying to deal with uh, sign in with Apple, which incidentally, similar to the impossible to trivial thing, uh, it, it, I don't know, I don't even, the thing that's frustrating is I don't even know what I finally changed to make it work. Uh, it would not work for the longest time, and then finally I got it working, and now it's working fine. And why? I don't know. But I was. I, it, this is something that should have probably taken like a couple of hours to get like a implementation of. I've spent weeks on it. Now, granted, I've been working on other things, but you know, it's still weeks of time trying to get this fucking thing to go. And I have like the whole list of things that I want to ha to happen. They're all predicated on having this working, so I've been just chipping away and chipping away, and it's getting really been getting on my nerves. I've been doing a bunch of work also, which is just tedious and annoying, and it's like, um, I don't know, it's, it's the same thing. I have a finite amount of capacity 
for annoyance. And I, I'm sitting here doing a calculation, which is basically like, I'm doing this shit for other people that are not paying me that well. And also, you know, like I'm, I'm partly doing it because, and I'm not like that motivated by money, but I'm partly doing it because there's the idea that, you know, okay, I've put all this time and effort in, and then there could be a payoff, payout at some point in the not too distant future. And I like that, that, that appeals to me, you know. Without that, I think I would just fucking quit and go off and do something else. Um, but there are things I'd like to do, I'd much rather be doing, but I don't have the resources to do them. And then I have had other jobs which pay a lot better, and they are less stressful in terms of like you're not sitting there like on the hook for paying a bunch of people's salaries, but they're also annoying because you're doing other people's stupid ideas. And what I would really like to be doing is my own stupid ideas. You know, if I'm wasting time and I'm getting frustrated, I want it to be because I'm working on something that I think is worth wasting the time on. And instead, I'm just like constantly stretched fucking thin because I'm working on this stuff that to me just is pointless and, you know, like it, it does not deserve my, you know, a little bit of arrogance here, but it does not deserve my attention. You know, it does not deserve a second thought for me. It's like kind of in a weird way, like Trump, like I, I should notice that Trump exists in a, in a more just universe. Notice that Trump exists, do a minimal few hundred milliseconds of processing about him, and then pff, just file him off into oblivion and never be aware of his existence again, never be impacted by such a person. And instead, it's like years and years and years, I'm just getting worn down by people, you know, like putting somebody this awful into power. And then, yeah, I mean, Biden, I mean, he's better than Trump. Yeah, I do I get into fucking arguments with people on Twitter about this, but yeah, he's better than Trump. I'm sorry, you know. No, he's exactly the same. He's not exactly the same. They're both horrible. This is the thing too, because you have people who don't understand yeah, they're both completely shitty. Absolutely. Trump is still worse. And this, like, honestly, I'm not even going to defend that statement. I think it should be just manifestly obvious. Um, you know, both that they're both bad should be obvious. I don't want to argue with people that Biden is a piece of shit. Um, if you don't know that Biden is a piece of shit, do some more research. You know, I, I mean, it's not me. I'm not just you. Know, but... Trump is a bigger piece of shit and you have the whole situation. And, and yeah, I know, I understand like me voting for Biden is rewarding the democratic party for giving us a piece of shit instead of giving us a better choice. Um, I, I, and I've talked to people about this. They're like, Oh, you did, you're rewarding them. And you're doing all this stuff. I'm sorry. I'm not the person. And I do agree with the logic. Like it's just escalating and it essentially is negotiating with terrorists. I'm, I, and like I'm saying, I'm sorry, I'm not the person who's going to tell the terrorist to blow a little kid's head, you know, brains out, because I think that the terrorist is going to see me negotiating with them and then do worse. I'm going to do what I can to keep the kid from getting their, their brains blown out. Now, I'm also going to try to prevent other stuff too, but I kind of have to, like, you have to triage before you can deal with the bigger problems, you know? You have to deal with the stuff that is immediate and urgent and then deal with the bigger stuff. You can't just go, well, fuck it. We're just gonna, you know, let this stuff burn. And then, you know, I mean, you, you can, it's a strategy, uh, but I think it's extremely dangerous. And it's also like, I, I, it's one of these things where just the idea that things could go completely to shit and then recover anytime soon um, and not get worse is just demented. Like. The odds are, historically, whenever things get bad, um, you know, governments fall apart and this kind of thing, usually it goes in a bad direction. Very rarely does it actually get better. You know, for all, for all of the problems with the United States, if we had someone other than Washington, um, we probably would have had a, a dictatorship. <laughs> I mean, we probably would have a king of America. And, you know, I'm not saying Washington is perfect by any means either, but, you know, you look at that, that's remarkably lucky 
that the revolution had at Washington. Um, and the odds were strongly against it and doing something similar to that, uh, the odds are very much not in your favor. And especially like now, you know, you have these Republicans who are like armed to the teeth and basically prepping for um, essentially like martial law and taking over things. You have people like that and you think we are going to come out well in a situation where the government falls it is not a good, not a good well thought out strategy. Um, and especially also like the one that fucking annoys me. The Republicans have been working on stuff for, and when I say the Republicans, it's not just the party, but people like the Kochs have been working on shit for decades. And we just kind of come back and we're like, oh, look, we, you know, they, what, what do you know? They're trying to overturn Roe versus Wade. They've been trying to overturn Roe versus Wade for decades. And the fact that people could see this shit happening in real time and see their strategy and see that they're, you know, I mean, they weren't subtle about it or shy about it. They grew people like Kavanaugh and uh, Amy in a fucking lab, essentially, specifically to overturn Roe versus Wade and do other bad things. And you look at that and you're like, yeah, I mean, how the fuck did you not see this? And how do you not see it's an emergency? The same fucking thing with climate change. Like, this is something we've known about, um, you know. I, I mean, the very most generous interpretation there is go back to Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth. And even that, it was decades old information. You know, the idea that we haven't known is just indefensible. We've known, we just didn't fucking do anything. And you look at that and it's just like, it's so fucking dumb. Like, why? Why? You know, and, and I mean, so now, I mean, you look similarly, like we have the court and people are like, whoa, it's 6-3. That's, it's totally, well. you know, you have Justice Breyer who will not retire. The odds are, I, I mean, what I see now feels like I'm on a, and, and this is how I felt a lot for the last four years, but I felt like I was on a fucking train heading toward a ravine like a cliff and you could see it and you're like screaming, like stop the fucking train. And people are like, <whistles> you know, just sitting there whistling, going about their days. Like, Oh, this is, and not only that, they're acting like I'm a maniac for freaking out about, you know, like where we're going. Um, you know, I mean, RBG, many, many good things can be said about her. The fact that she didn't retire when she had a chance to get replaced by Obama, um, I, I think undoes essentially her legacy. Um, similarly, and similarly, I mean, Breyer now has even less excuse because at least RBG, you could understand. Like, okay, she's a woman. She's the second woman to sit on the Supreme Court. It takes a special kind of person to get up there and getting into that position. And that's not a person who's going to be told what to do, probably. And also... Not only that, I mean, it, most of the time when people have told her what to do, they were fucking wrong. Like, you know, she was like, oh, no. So you go through a lifetime of that. You're not the person that's going to say, okay, this time my judgment is not good. Uh, you're probably just going to plow forward and think everybody else is an idiot. I, this is part of why, honestly, I'm not a fan of Pelosi. I don't like her in any way. But I do kind of understand why she's such a pain in the ass. Because to her, she's like, oh, I know better than everybody. And, yeah, I mean, to some extent, you can't deny the fact that she's gone through politics and she's had a successful career and all of this stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of history to say, yeah, in certain events in the past, you have known better. Uh, right now, of course, and this is the same fucking problem with Biden and with Breyer and with RBG and a lot of other people, right now the situation is not the same. And you're dealing with it as though it was, and you're not adapting to it. Um, but, you know. So anyway, I... Rolling back a little bit. I'm going to try to wrap this up in like 15. Uh, mainly because I still have... Well, I have one more meeting at 5 o'clock today. And I have a bunch of other work that I still want to do before I leave for the weekend. And that's work that I can't do on the weekend because it requires a PC. And I only have a PC here. Whereas I have my Mac, which I 
take with me. But anyway, that aside, um, it's raining here. It's fucking awesome. Relatively cool for Arizona standards. Uh, makes me really wish I lived someplace with gray days because I don't like I don't want a gray day all the time, but gray days are awesome. Um, the thing that I really wanted to talk about today, and I'm going to try to make this quick, but it's transcription. And the reason that I want to talk about this, and I, I, I know that this is a pointless thing, and probably if you're listening to this, you either know about it or you don't care. And I apologize in either case. Uh, but I've, I've been going, I've been losing my fucking mind talking to people who are anti-vaxxers, who insist that they're not anti-vax. It's like, what they like to say is they're not anti-vax, they're vaccine, they're, you know, skeptical or they're hesitant or they're just being cautious or whatever. But then they're basically anti-vax. Um, so, you know, they have all of these bullshit things about the, about the COVID-19 vaccines the bulk of them are just made out of whole cloth. You know, it's like, oh, they rushed this, they made it too fast. It's like, you know, honestly, we've had vaccines for other coronaviruses, um, and we've had RNA vaccines around for a while. It's a thing that people have been developing for a long time. Um, there are, you know, it's, it's not a complicated thing. It's, it's one of these things also where other vaccines that we've used in the past, uh, whether they're live virus or attenuated virus, or some kind of a vector which expresses virus proteins but is not from the original virus. All of these kinds of vaccines have a bunch of other bullshit in them that is much worse and much more dangerous than mRNA. And the thing that I want to talk about, and I'm going to make this really fucking quick because it's not a thing that takes much time, but I've been talking to people and one thing that I've heard that makes me just rip my fucking hair out is that people are saying, and they are very wrong here, but people are saying that these mRNA vaccines are some sort of somehow gene therapy. And this is completely fucking insane and unfounded. And I'll tell you why. Gene therapy has a very specific meaning. It is basically taking something, like a gene, uh, and putting it into the nucleus of a cell or at the very least in the DNA of a cell. And that cell continues to express that thing for its life. And potentially in the germline, so potentially in the, the gametes and then off to the next generation and so on. That would be gene therapy. In order to go from RNA to DNA, in, in, in your body, this happens all the time. If you have, you have genes in your, in your genome, in your DNA, and these genes are little segments of, RNA, of DNA. Blech. Segments of DNA. And this segment of DNA gets first transcribed, like copied into complementary RNA. That RNA then goes on to be translated into protein. And I don't even want to go through the details of what all that stuff is. You can look that up if you don't know it already. Um, I don't want to bore anyone who's non-technical, but that's, that's the flow of information in your body. RNA in your body is just there as a matter of course because of these mRNAs and other things within your cells. And there are these enzymes called RNases, which chop that stuff up pretty quickly. It doesn't last very long. It just gets broken down. Now, you can take DNA and insert it into your genome and then that becomes part of that cell and all of that cell's progeny. And if it's a germline cell, all of your progeny. That is gene therapy. You can even take RNA and put it into a retrovirus, for example, like uh, HIV or probably one that's more benign, but put it into something like that. You have a reverse transcriptase, which your cells do not have normally, unless they're infected with something like this, which will copy that RNA into DNA and then that gets inserted into your genome. That would be gene therapy. Um, that happens naturally all the time, by the way. And in fact, we have, as human beings, we have a bunch of chunks in our DNA of, of retrovirus genomes and fragments that incorporated themselves a long time ago and have since become dormant, but they're basically like part of us. That's gene therapy. Um, not that scary to begin with, but also that's gene therapy. mRNA, which is what these vaccines are, 
is just using the mechanisms within your cells, able to do two things. One, be translated from mRNA to protein. Um, and two, to be degraded by RNAs. That's, that's it. So you inject it into somebody, it's going to get expressed, you know, translated into protein, and it's gonna get chopped up into bits and washed away. All of the information destroyed in that sense. And when it becomes protein also, those proteins don't sit around forever. They eventually get destroyed as well. So not gene fucking therapy. There's no path in, <laughs> to taking that and somehow having it become part of your cell. It's not like, you know, I mean, it is expressing itself via the mechanisms of your cell, but so is the virus. So is any, you know, any viral, um, whether it's live attenuated or, you know, some kind of complementary, any kind of viral vaccine that's not dead is doing that too. Uh, but it's also carrying a bunch of other bullshit that you don't understand and it's just random stuff in there. Now, and also it's not gene therapy. Again, unless you're incorporating it into your genome, not gene therapy. Now, the fact that people are calling this this is just like, I mean, it's one of these things that just drives me fucking insane because I, I don't even know how to approach these people because they're things where if you would have taken a fucking, like the stuff that I went over is the most superficial surface level detail that if you took one semester of biology that included transcription and translation, just a little bit, um, that would be enough to know not fucking gene therapy. And you know, I, I feel like I'm even doing a disservice here just talking about it because I don't, I keep saying, you know, these two things and then you see it and you kind of make the association, but it's definitely, definitely not. Um, it, it, if you have that experience, that expertise on the subject, that little bit of domain expertise, and again, really just superficial level of expertise does this, you know that this is a bullshit claim. And yet I sit there and I fucking talk to these people who have no, obviously no training, no understanding of this stuff, and they're insisting that they know, first off, they're insisting they know as much or more than I do. Uh, and on, on this subject, I'm sorry, like, I understand, you know, I'm not making an appeal to authority here. I have a lot of fucking time. You know, I spent a lot of years, a lot of classes, a lot of lab work, a lot of study on these subjects. And I don't care how much time you spend on fucking Google or YouTube or whatever, I know more than you do about these subjects. Pretty fucking sure. Pretty safe bet. Yeah. So that one just don't. And then they'll take things that somebody said out of context and they're like, oh, well, look at this expert. And then you look at this and it's like, well, okay, either they're completely misinterpreting something somebody else said. And you look at what they said and they're like, oh, well, you know, there's, they're like shading something and adding some complexity to it. And they're taking out like just a tiny fiber of that and turning it into a thing that it's not. Or they're finding somebody who's like a physicist. You know, if, if I only had a degree in physics and I didn't have microbiology with virology and immunology, imagine I just had physics and I was sitting here pontificating about this shit. I probably don't know fucking shit about it then. Um, the, it's specifically because I've spent so many years studying this stuff. And because you, you don't have to have a degree in it to be an expert on it. You don't have to have the degree to be right about it. But there are certain things which are just obviously not true when somebody starts spewing them. And they, they're, they're signals, really. They're like a shibboleth where you're like, if somebody says it wrong, you know they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And they can, it, like everything else that they're saying kind of becomes put into question because they're saying something that's just not even grounded in the, like, not, not even a bare toe in reality. It's just out there. And it just fucking ticks me off. It's one of these things also, like, I, you know, I, I, I'm so frustrated by this and this whole experience recently. When I say recently, I mean, you know, like, especially the last, like, five years. But just generally, there are so many people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They get up, they say things declaratively, and they're like, oh, I'm so certain. And then they also start arguing with people who have a much deeper and broader understanding of these subjects than they do. And again, yes, 
appeal to authority by itself is not a good thing. But the thing is, and the reason that appeal to authority even kind of existed is that, well, I mean, obviously like religion and all of this stuff, ignoring the priesthood thing. When I say I have a PhD in physics, I'm not saying I'm right because I have a PhD in physics. I am saying that I'm pro if I tell you something about physics, I'm probably right about that because I've spent fucking years studying this shit. You know, I, I probably know more than you do about physics, unless you also have a PhD in physics. Maybe in some small domain you know more, but probably, yeah. If you have a PhD in electrical engineering, you probably know a hell of a lot more than I do about the subject. Now, there might be things that I know because I've practiced them more recently that you don't, but you know, by and large, if we get in an argument and you know all things appear equal, the person with the PhD probably is right. And when I say that, and in, specifically in the domain that we're talking about, if they're wrong, they're probably wrong for a good reason. Which again, you know, I mean, just going back to the RBG thing and uh, the Pelosi thing, when these people are wrong, they're wrong because as much as it pains me to say, like it, the stuff that their decision-making, their thought process has been proven right for a long time. And it's just that things have changed that's left them in this position. Now, things have not changed about the definition of gene therapy, about what mRNA vaccines are, any of this kind of stuff. And I mean, it's just like, it's excruciating to me that you have these people who, again, and I think this is, I've always been bothered by this because there, you definitely don't want to make an appeal to authority. You don't want like a priesthood where it's like, oh, the, the rabbi said this, and so that's gotta be, you know, that's the correct interpretation of whatever. And, you know, you don't want that. But you also, at the same time, and I apologize for the noise outside. I'm not gonna stop this. I have to, I have to finish presently. So if you don't hear that, then, you know, but there's a horrible noise from somebody probably running like a two-stroke engine out there for no fucking reason. Another thing I'm getting really irritated with. But anyway, um, Priesthood is bad. That kind of appeal to authority is bad. But at the same time, you have to shave off what is expertise? What does it mean to be an expert? And the fact that you're an expert in something is not meaningless. It actually means a lot. And again, if you're an expert in something, you could be proven wrong. You know, there's the whole, uh, probably apocry apocryphal, uh, but uh, 100 physicists prove Einstein wrong. And then Einstein is like, well, my dear boy, it only takes one. And it's true. You can, that's the whole fucking nice thing about science really is that you can prove something wrong without knowing that much. And you can even, you know, but the, and that does exist, but the probability is not in your favor there. And generally speaking, when you do that, you prove it in the sense that you've shown something where it's just definitive and, you know, easy to, to verify or you've falsified something, you know, whatever. Um, what people are doing instead is they're kind of uh, weirdly also appealing to authority, but they're like, you know, oh, this guy has a PhD, you have a PhD, so you're both equal. And no, the guy that you're talking about either is not in the domain or is not saying the things you think you're, that they're saying, or they're actually wrong. And they can be wrong, um, although that, one is particularly fucking annoying because it's like, you know, 95 plus percent of climate scientists say X and agree with X. And then, well, yeah, there are some small percentage that, and yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, this is why you can't just appeal to authority, but the 95% are probably saying the things that they're saying based on things that are in line with what they've studied and what they understand and what's probably, probably true. So, Anyway, with that, I have got to get going so that I can go just beat my head against the monitor for an hour and then have a meeting. Um, thank you for, for listening. I'm sorry about the weird uh, glitch up um, for the last couple of weeks. Hopefully it won't happen this time. I'm gonna get this one out as soon as possible because I don't wanna have 
apparently banking these up or getting them backed up is not a good, uh, not a good thing. Um, but anyway, um, serenity now, I think is what they say. Ah, <sighs> with that, thank you as always for watching or listening and, uh, say Jen.